come to this quiet corner here at the end of the road with the chaparral all around us to find a quiet corner in our own minds. Because that's something you can take with you wherever you go, whether you're in this spot at the end of the road or if you're at an intersection someplace. It's good to have that quiet spot in the mind. But it's best to try to find it first with good outside surroundings, surroundings that are conducive. Try to find a place where you don't have a lot of responsibilities, or even if you do have some responsibilities, they wear lightly. You don't want them to wear you down all the time or weigh you down all the time. While you're sitting here meditating, think of all those responsibilities just being pulverized. They don't have any meaning right now. Your main responsibility is the breath. The state of your mind staying with the breath. That's all you've got to worry about. As you're focused on the breath, you want to focus on, on a way that makes it easy to stay here. That's why you have to choose a spot in the body that's congenial, and choose a way of breathing that's congenial as well. Experiment to see what feels best right now. What does your body need? Does it need long breathing or short breathing? Does it need to, <clears throat> does it need to be energized? That's the case. Breathe in a way that gives it more energy. It doesn't need to be relaxed. Breathe in a more relaxing way. Try to have a sense of what would be nice and balanced right now. And learn to think of the breath in a way that makes it easy to breathe in and easy to breathe out. Sometimes you find as you breathe in that there's a tension that will build up, say, maybe in the head someplace in the shoulders or in the back that shows that you're using those muscles too much in the breathing. Because the breath can come in and out without tension building up at all. The tension is something unnecessary, something you've added on. So very consciously allow those parts of the body to stay relaxed and see if you can still breathe in. It may feel strange for a bit, but after all, you find that it really is more refreshing, really is more energizing. It really is better for you. This is one of the most important things you learn as you meditate, is that you're adding a lot of unnecessary stress, a lot of unnecessary suffering to life, simply in the way you breathe, also in the way you think, the way you perceive things. even the feelings you focus on. Right now you could be focusing on the parts of the body that are a little bit painful or a little bit uncomfortable, and you could very easily get yourself really, really deeply in pain by the end of the hour. Or you can focus on the potentials for something that's comfortable, a sense of ease, the parts of the body that may at the moment seem neutral, but you think of the breath energy energizing those giving them a sense of fullness and then allowing that fullness to spread so the different full spots connect. You find that the potentials of the body are different than you thought. A lot of this has to do with what you're doing right now, what you're choosing right now, where you're choosing to focus, how you're choosing to focus, how you picture these things to yourself in your mind. In other words, suffering is optional. And it's usually through our own ignorance that we take the, the suffering option. But as you meditate, you learn there are other options as well. There is, as the Buddha said, the potential for rapture here in the body. There's the potential for stillness, the potential for pleasure. These potentials are all here. You want to learn how to develop them. Ferret them out, find where they are, and see what you can do to protect them. So they're sense of well-being can grow.
This is why it's so important that you learn how to question as you meditate. Not in the sense of doubting, but in this questioning sense of, what am I doing? Is it getting good results? Could I be doing something better? That kind of questioning is very helpful. Look at the life of the Buddha as he was pursuing awakening. It wasn't that he had it all mapped out ahead of him. He had to notice that he was causing himself unnecessary suffering one way or another, and he'd stop and ask himself, why am I doing that? Why am I looking for happiness in the wrong places? Why am I adding this unnecessary suffering to myself? Why am I following a path that's not getting the results I want? Could there be another way? Then he'd use his imagination to try to figure out what some other ways might be, and then he would test them. So even though we have the path laid out to some extent, we know that virtue, concentration, and discernment are important. We know that the breath is a good place to stay. Still, there's a lot that we've got to learn about how we breathe, how we approach the meditation. Sometimes you'll find that as soon as you sit down to meditate and even think about focusing on the breath, there's a tightness in the body. Okay, what did you do? Why do you have that habitual reaction? What is there about trying to be consciously aware of the breath that makes you tense up around the breath? Do you find that happening? Stop and think about goodwill for a bit, or any other meditation topic. So you can divert your attention from the breath for a while, and then come back to the breath, and then notice how is the breath while you're focusing on goodwill? How is the breath when you're focusing on compassion, when you're focusing on recollection of the Buddha? And as soon as you tell yourself to stay with the breath, what happens? What did you change? That's one way of catching yourself, adding unnecessary stress and suffering. to what should be a perfectly normal, natural process right here. When things feel just natural and normal, how can you push them a little bit so they get better? Because the pleasure that comes from concentration isn't something that's just going to happen to you and stay. I mean, there are times when you run across it inadvertently, and they give you a little taste. Oh, this is how, it can, how good it can be. But if you aren't clear about what you're doing, clear about how you main, can maintain it, it's going to leave you. But if you try to be very, very sensitive to how the breath feels, very sensitive to how you're focusing on it and how the way you focus has an impact on the breath. Then if you figure, okay, it's having a negative impact, what can you do to counteract that? As you figure these things out through your own experimentation, you find that this sense of rapture, this potential for rapture really can develop, the potential for ease and well-being, the potential for stillness of mind can develop in a much more solid and an intense way than it would just if things were left to go their own course. So try to be very, very sensitive to what you're doing right now as you focus on the breath. And if you see any unnecessary stress, any unnecessary tension, tightness, learn how to let it go and see if you can continue breathing in, breathing out as you let it go. This way you pick up on lots of unnecessary suffering, unnecessary stress you've been carrying around, that you didn't even realize you were carrying it. It's like having a weight on your shoulders, and all of a sudden the weight is lifted from your shoulders. You find that you can stand taller than you could before. Your posture feels more comfortable. 
And it's not that someone told you to carry that weight around. You're just doing it out of habit. So learn how to question your habits. And you find that the load of life that you're carrying around doesn't have to be as heavy as it has been. And this is the skill you want to be able to take back with you when you leave this quiet corner. You have that quiet corner in the mind where you can observe these things. And you can use that quietness to get more and more sensitive, more and more skilled at learning how to take the loads off the mind. <laughs>